Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Good day folks, we're happy to bring you the latest updated of ASEAN News. South Korea registers 13,000 coronavirus cases for the first time. According to the data, South Korea's daily new coronavirus cases exceeds 13,000 for the first time. While the government sought to revise its COVID-19 response to focus on the highly contagious but less lethal Omicron variant. The record 13,012 comes just today, after the tally topped 8,000 for the first time amid a rapid spread of Omicron despite the extension of tough social distancing rules. Health officials say Omicron is likely to account for more than 90% of new infections over the next few weeks, with the daily numbers surging to 20,000 to 30,000 or more. A new testing policy has taken effect in four designated cities on a pilot basis, under which only priority groups can take a polymerase chain reaction test, while others should get a rapid antigen test first at a local clinic. Myanmar marks one year of military coup on February 1st. On 1st February, Myanmar marks the one-year anniversary of the Myanmar military overthrowing the elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. Myanmar has been in turmoil since the coup against Suu Kyi's democratically elected government led to widespread protest and signaled the end of the 10 years of tentative political reforms that followed decades of strict military rule. She has been sentenced to six years in jail in legal proceedings that rights groups have criticized as affairs and is on trial in nearly a dozen cases that carry combined maximum sentences of more than 100 years in prison. She denies all charges. The Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, a human rights group, says more than 1,400 people have been killed in violence since the coup, including those killed in bombing raids. The junta disputes the reported number of casualties. 19 people died in a fire at karaoke bar in West Papua, Indonesia. Police in the provincial capital of Sorong says at least 19 people dead after a karaoke bar in Indonesia's West Papua is set ablaze following a brawl between rival gangs of youths in the area. A police official says one person was fatally stabbed in the fight early before the venue was set on fire with 18 people trapped inside. In addition, Adam says the deadly incident at the entertainment venue in Sorong was still under investigation and it was unclear if the death toll will rise. Separately, Dedi Prasetyo, a spokesman for Indonesia's national police says the brawl was between the two rival gangs from the neighboring island of Maluku. Indonesia and Singapore signs a bilateral agreement covering aerospace and defense. Now we would like to invite the Indonesia and Singapore signs a bilateral extradition agreement, a move that Jakarta expects to help authorities in their efforts to bring to justice people accused of stashing offshore billions of dollars in state money. Senior cabinet ministers from both countries also signed bilateral agreements covering airspace and defense in a ceremony aired on Indonesia's State Secretariat YouTube channel. The signings follow a meeting between President Joko Widodo and Singapore Prime Minister Lee Xiong Lung on the Indonesian island of Bintan as part of their annual leaders' retreat. Meanwhile, Indonesia's Investment and Maritime Affairs Ministry in a statement says, under the extradition agreement, people who had committed 31 types of crime will be liable to extradite it, and it will apply to offenses committed up to 18 years ago, and people will not be able to escape justice by changing their citizenship. In 2007, Indonesian President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono and Prime Minister Lee oversaw the signing of an extradition treaty and defense cooperation agreement, but it was never ratified by Indonesia's parliament. Japan sends transport vessel to help Tonga after disaster. 
Japan sends a transport vessel carrying emergency relief supplies to Tonga after the South Pacific island nation was hit by a volcanic eruption and tsunami and largely cut off from the outside world. According to the public broadcaster NHK, Japan's maritime self-defense warship Osumi departed from Kure Naval Base with equipment to remove volcanic ash along with drinking water and other supplies. The vessel is due to arrive at Tonga in about two weeks. The Red Cross says its team in Tonga had confirmed that salt water from the tsunami and volcanic ash were polluting the drinking water of tens of thousands of people. At least three people were killed and hundreds of homes in Tonga's smaller outer islands destroyed after eruption triggered tsunami waves that rolled over the islands home to 105,000 people. South Korean business owners shaves their head to protest government about coronavirus curfew. Over 200 South Korean small business owners shaved their heads in Seoul to protest the government's extension of curfew and restrictions amid growing coronavirus cases brought about the fast spreading. Some business owners in tears when they had their heads shaved on a makeshift stage under a large banner reading actual compensation for losses caused by COVID-19 just near the country's National Assembly. South Korea reinstated tougher distancing curbs in December as record-breaking numbers of daily cases and critically ill patients threatened to saturate its medical system before the Omicron wave hit. Earlier this month, the government extended the rules for three more weeks ahead of the Lunar New Year holidays. The curbs will last until February 6, including a 9 p.m. curfew for restaurants, cafes and bars, but the limit on private gatherings will be raised to six fully vaccinated people from four. Cambodian Prime Minister urges Myanmar Junta chief to allow ASEAN to visit. An official says Cambodia's leaders are just Myanmar's military ruler to facilitate a visit by special envoy of the ASEAN and to help provide humanitarian aid to Myanmar people who needed it most. Kao Kim Horn, Foreign Ministry Secretary of State, told reporters that Cambodian Prime Minister and ASEAN Chair Hun Sen, in a video call with military chief Ming Oholeng, appealed to him to implement a five ASEAN consensus the junta chief agreed to last year. As the new chair of ASEAN, Cambodia has indicated it wants to engage and not isolate the junta. Hun Sen confirms he had invited Myanmar's junta chief to a summit of ASEAN on the condition he makes progress on a peace plan he agreed to last year. The overthrow of Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government in Myanmar has been a setback for ASEAN and its effort to present itself a credible and integrated bloc. Chinese Prime Minister holds virtual meeting with Dutch Prime Minister on bilateral relations. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang had a virtual meeting with Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte with both sides calling for strengthening exchanges and cooperation. Li says China is willing to work with the Netherlands to strengthen political mutual trust, advance practical cooperation, enhance people-to-people -people exchanges and push for new development in bilateral relations so as to better benefit the two countries and the two peoples. Li also stresses that China and Europe share vast common interests and express the hope for the Dutch side as a key member of the European Union to play a constructive role in promoting China-Europe relations and cooperation. Rutte says the Netherlands looks forward to deepening exchanges and cooperation in various fields with China and he believes that China will definitely hold a successful Winter Olympic Games. Meanwhile, the Dutch Prime Minister is also notes that the European Union and China need to strengthen dialogue, work together, properly handle differences and jointly address global challenges such as the pandemic and climate change. Vietnamese artists carved hundreds of tigers for Chinese New Year. Artist Nguyen Tan Pat is exercising his talents to carve teeth stripes and claws out of the wooden blocks and other stone-like materials. Pat is aiming to carve a total of 2022 tigers in honor of Lunar New Year 2022 by April.
According to Pat, Duong Lam village, which lies on the outskirts of Hanoi and is where his studio is based, is one of the only remaining villages in Vietnam that still uses laterite bricks. It takes Pat around six weeks just to make one tiger carving, some of which require up to 10 layers of paint. To save time, he works on multiple carvings each day and has assistants help with the finishing touches such as painting, sanding and lacquering. Pat often carves zodiac animals ahead of each Lunar New Year, but admits that this year he is carving a large quantity of tigers due to his preferences for animal. Pat plans to pull all 2022 tigers on display in an exhibition before selling them eventually. China says it's confusing as the United States will let its diplomat leave China because of the strict COVID-19 rules. Chinese Foreign Minister says it is puzzling as the United States weighs letting its diplomats leaving China over tough COVID-19 rules. Sources told Reuters that the United States Department is considering whether to authorize departures for American diplomats and their families in China wish to leave due to the U.S. government's inability to prevent Chinese authorities from subjecting them to intrusive pandemic control measures. Spokesman Zhao Lizian told a daily news briefing in Beijing, Chinese Foreign Minister spokesman says China's anti-pandemic measures were scientific and confirmed with diplomatic treaties, leaving China will increase the chances of getting infected. Two sources familiar with the issue says the U.S. Embassy had sent a request to Washington for formal sign-off as China ramps up COVID-19 containment protocols ahead of the opening of Beijing Winter Olympics in less than two weeks. And that's for today. Thank you for Julius Post Wardrobe Collection. We will see you again.